We now move on to our fourth classic oscillator, which is the physical pendulum. Now the truth is it's not that classic because a lot of instructors leave it out and don't go over the physical pendulum. But because it's not that different than the simple pendulum, we're going to go over it together and we're going to try to find omega naught for a physical pendulum. Now what is a physical pendulum? Well, a physical pendulum is any object that has a mass or size that you take and you try to have oscillate back and forth. Say you have something a bit weird looking like this. And this is your pivot point, call it A, and you would like to have this oscillate back and forth like that. Why not? Well, that's your physical pendulum. Okay, and in a physical pendulum, what's going to matter is the center of mass. Because you know that the center of mass is where the weight force is applied, and therefore you know that here you have weight. In addition, the distance between the pivot point and the center of mass, labeled H, is also important. And of course, any angle for the oscillations is going to be measured with respect to the vertical. And it's actually worth noting right away that if this is an angle theta, then this here is also theta. So let's apply torque net equals I alpha with respect to the pivot point A. Torque net is just equal to the torque due to weight because there's only one force acting on our pendulum. Now, if we're going to compute torque, we need a positive rotation that's counterclockwise. And here, we have mg that tries to pull this whole thing clockwise. That's a negative torque. So that's minus the distance between A and the center of mass. That's h, magnitude of the force mg, sine of the angle between h and mg, and that is theta. Now, of course, you could use this angle. That's pi minus theta, and they have the same sign. But I want sine theta to show up, so I'm going to use that. And that is equal to I alpha, which is the moment of inertia of your pendulum with respect to the pivot point. But I don't know what it is unless I really know what the shape is. And this is just some random shape. So I'm going to leave it as I. And I'm going to write the acceleration as d2 theta over dt squared. And so I end up with this. I end up with I d2 theta over dt squared plus mgh sine theta is equal to 0. And I have the same problem as with the simple pendulum. I have sine theta here. So I'm going to make the same assumption. I'm going to assume that the amplitude of oscillation will be less than 10 degrees. And if I do that, I can approximate sine theta by theta rather decently. And that gives me um, an equation that's much better because it gets rid of sine theta. Now, if I divide by whatever's in front of the highest order derivative, I get d2 theta over dt squared plus mgh divided by i theta is equal to 0. And that is a differential equation like the one I've been looking for because I know now that in front of theta, this is omega naught squared, which means that for the physical pendulum, of course, assuming that we have small oscillations, omega naught is equal to square root of mgh over i. And therefore, t naught, the period, which is 2 pi over omega naught, is 2 pi square root of i divided by mgh. Now be careful 
I is the moment of inertia with respect to A, and H is the distance between the pivot point and the center of mass of your pendulum. All right, but if you remember that, you see it's very similar to the simple pendulum, and we find omega naught and T naught. So lastly, what we're going to say is that the simplest physical pendulum that you could build is this one. You would take a string of length L and a point mass M attached to it. And you'll say, well, that's not a physical pendulum. That is a simple pendulum. True. But what if, in addition to a length, the string, or the rod, if you want to use a rod, had a mass big M? Well, in that case, this has a moment of inertia. So does this. And that is a physical pendulum. So the simplest physical pendulum that you can build is a simple pendulum with a string that has a mass or maybe a rod instead of the string. And if you'd like to try that, you can try to figure out what the moment of inertia is and find omega naught and T naught. In fact, if you really want to practice this, you could just use M, a point mass, and say that the string is massless, so you're back to the simple pendulum. And you'll see that this boils down to root of g over L and 2 pi root of L over G.